Welcome to this installment of Just One Thing. Uh, today I'm going to give you an overview of Windows Azure Queues. My name is Adam Grholsky and I'm a technical evangelist with RBA Consulting. So what is a queue? Well, you know, you could put it this way, it's an asynchronous dispatch queue, but really it's a, it's a way to kind of decouple work, to kind of give you you and your applications, the ability to scale out work as needed. If you've used uh, other queuing mechanisms in the past, uh, a popular one being MSMQ or Microsoft Message Queues, um, we're, we're talking about the same concept here. We're just talking about it in the cloud, in Windows Azure. When working with Azure queues, there's really two kinds of operations you'll be dealing with. So it's, it's a pretty small API, but you have queue operations. This, these operations uh, entail deleting queues, creating queues, uh, clearing them out, etc. And then you have message operations, so adding messages to queues, reading messages, deleting messages from queues. And that, that's really it. There's not a whole lot in terms of the queue API that you need to be familiar with. Conceptually, um, you know, as with other storage abstractions in Azure, it all starts with the storage account. Each storage account can have queues. Uh, there's no limit on the number of queues a storage account can have. So you could have, you know, multiple hundreds of queues if you needed them for a storage account. And then a queue contains messages. They're processed uh, first in, first out, or FIFO. So first message in the queue will be the first message, message pulled off the queue. These messages um, have a maximum size of 8K, 8 kilobytes, and their contents must be serializable. So it could be a string or, or a serializable object. What you should keep in mind is that these messages should be very small. There shouldn't be a whole lot of data in them. What they should do is point the consumer of the message to another place to get the, all the information they need to, to achieve or to complete the work that's associated with the message. So maybe it's I drop a message on a queue that has a, an ID of a record in a database with you know some action to perform. My process monitoring the queue will then go look up that that record in the database, pull the information it needs, and and perform the associated or the appropriate action with that information. So they should be really light. Shouldn't keep a whole lot of information in these messages. So why would you want to use queues or really consider queues in your application? Well, it, it enables you to loosely couple uh, work associated with your services and applications. For instance, let's say I have a website and that website's purpose is to allow users to upload video, at which point it will then kind of encode it for different formats. I could do all that as part of the website, but that's going to kill my UI and my user experience. So instead, I can have my web role, which allows users to upload the file, and that upload could occur or happen in blob storage, but once the upload is completed, those web roles could then drop messages onto a queue. So think input queue, a work item to say, hey, there's a new video and it needs to be encoded. In the background, I can have a number of worker roles monitoring that queue and then processing appropriately. So once that message hits the queue, the first worker role to pick up the message will find it. Um, that message will become hidden. The worker role will then you know, encode the video or do whatever work that needs to be done and then delete the message off the queue. So the advantage here is that maybe I only need two web roles. There's not a lot of high I.O. maybe on the website, but I can have 10 worker roles to do all the encoding for me. So it allows me to kind of really think differently about the way I'm doing work. Another thing to note, too, and I kind of talked about it, but those messages when they're on the queue, um, they wouldn't be read by each worker role. The first worker role to read the message, uh, once that message is read, it'll be hidden. So the next worker role pulling the queue won't see the message. If, if a role has a message in kind of a hidden state and the role blows up, um, the message will eventually um, appear back on the queue um, after the timeout. So something to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind, too, is that once that message has been processed, it needs to be deleted. Otherwise, it will appear back on the queue. So after a message is read, processed, you have to go through and specifically intentionally delete it. So I said working with queues is fairly easy, so let's look at a quick demo to see how it's done. Okay, so what I have here is just a simple Windows console application to uh, show how to work with queues. Um, I chose a console application because A, I can actually work with Azure storage from any kind of application. I'm not limited to web and worker roles. And so the console application allows us to focus just on working with queues rather than all the other things that come along with a, a full-blown Azure application. So first, I need to add some references here, so I'm just going to add two of them in, storage client and the uh, data services client. I may not need it, but you never know, so let's just drop that in too. 
Next thing I'm going to do when I'm working with things like Azure queues and blobs is I like to have a class that handles the initialization of storage for me. So I'm just going to create a storage class. And I'll, and I'll show you why I do this. So here's our class. Let's clean up the namespaces here. I'm going to bring in just what I need. So just those three namespaces. We'll make this class public. Then I've got some private statics. I usually do all of uh, kind of my operations in here in a static method. And all I have here is just a, kind of a, a bit flag to track whether or not I've initialized storage, a lock to use when I'm initializing storage. That way I'm thread safe. And then of course a cloud queue client. That client is how I interact with the queue. I, I get a queue, I add messages to it. That's one of my core ways of acting with queues. So next up I'm going to add uh, an initialize method. So the first thing I want to do is obviously check to say, hey, did I actually already initialize? If so, then I'll want to return. Then I want to add a lock. So this way I'm thread safe, so I'm not initializing twice. And once again, I'm going to just do a quick check to see if storage is initialized within the lock already. You know, just got to be thread safe. Next, I need to get a storage account to work with. Uh, for this demo, I'm just going to use the development storage account. I could replace that with a live uh, Azure account if I wanted to. And then I want to create my cloud queue client. So this allows me to go and create queues. So now I want to create a message queue. So this is where this is actually where I'm going to store messages. So I create a cloud a cloud queue, and then I get a reference to the queue from the cloud client. So get queue reference and I have my name message queue. The name has to be lowercase, can't contain any illegal characters, all kinds of naming restrictions around the queues. And this is important here. Once I once I have a reference to the queue, I create it if it doesn't exist. Um, make sure you do that, otherwise you'll be wondering why aren't my messages on the queue? Why is my application blowing up? And then of course I want to make sure I, I have my flag set to true so I know storage is initialized. From there, I just have a couple of message w methods. One to get that cloud queue client in case I want to work with it. So, you know, it's just calling initialize and then returning this variable that we set as part of initialization. And then I want a cloud queue. So the queue I can actually work with. Once again, it calls initialize and then it gets that queue reference to the message queue. So which will have been created as part of the initialization process. So that's it. Pretty easy to kind of get a queue. But now let's start looking at um, adding and uh, reading messages. So make sure we build, which we do. So we'll go over to storage, or our program, I should say. Once again, we're just going to clean this up. Just what we need there, just system and the storage client. So first thing I want to do is I want to capture a message that I can add to the queue. So let's just get some input here from the console. Next, I want to get a reference to the queue, so we'll use that storage class we created, so cloud queue, cloud queue, so storage.get cloud queue, so that'll give me the right queue I want to work with. And then I need to create a message, so this is just simply cloud queue message. Uh, remember, the contents of the message must be serializable, and in this case, a string happens to be serializable, so that will be just fine there. And then I add the message to the queue, and that's it. The message will be on the queue. So let's take it a step further and actually read a message. So doing that is as simple as just calling get message. So queue.get message will get me the message that was that's at the top of the list. So that message, remember we're first in, first out, so the this will give me the, the message that was first in. I can then read the message. So if it's let's see here, here we go. Oops. Right. So if the message isn't null. Basically, queue message as string, since I know this is a string, I'll just write it out to the console. And then last but not least, and this is important, after I've done what I wanted to do, in this case, write its contents to the console window, I delete the message. That way it won't get processed again. And then, of course, we'll put a nice pause in here, and we're good to go. So let's run this. So enter your message, hello. You'll see there it added it to the queue, the message is in the queue, and it read it and then it deleted it. So we can exit this. Another thing I can show very quickly is go to development. Oh. 
you can actually go and take a look at your queue. Oh, wrong one. That's my bad. Don't know why it's prompting me for those credentials. But anyway, you can actually go through, and I'm having, it looks like a vi minor Visual Studio issue, nothing to worry about. Um, but you could actually go through and look at those queues on your local machine if you wanted to as well. So as the demo showed, it's pretty easy to work with queues in Azure. Um, and they're a great thing to use, especially as you start thinking about using web and worker roles in different fashions to really decouple your work and make sure that each role can do what it's really good at and offload um, more complicated work or, or work that's better suited to maybe background processing or other roles. Um, and it can do that via queues. The API is very simple to use. Um, definitely worth considering as part of your architectures for the cloud. And that is it for today.